working mainly creatives and wide impact on society. And what I'm going to show you is going to combine a, a little bit of both. I want to take you one year back to LGM uh, Toronto and uh, beforehand Dave, Dave Crossland was like, hey man, you got to go to this session. You know, what session? And it's like, well, it's Nathan session. And so it turned out and uh, what was it about? Obadiah features and especially about having UI for users to control Obadiah features. Now we're going to do a little uh, raise your hands also this morning. Who is familiar with open type features? <coughs> okay, sizable. Must be a specialized audience that bothered to wake up this morning. Uh, Going to show some of them anyway for, for the rest of us. Um, what can I say about it? There's a lot of fancy replacements inside a phone. <coughs> and I'll just show bits of it. attention to the number system for instance, these are the ones we know, uh, capital height, motor space, proportional space, lowercase numbers, motor space, proportional. In a good font there's four different numbers included in it. For more examples, somebody with wild will alternates, especially if you want to go direction of scripted, handwritten fonts, you need variation, you can do this in random ways. In, uh, in open type also. So he went mad with ligatures, A, B, A, B, A, B, <coughs> even once for three letters out there. So, but that's just Latin and that's just a small part of it. A <coughs> large part of open type features is this um, getting non Latin uh, <coughs> languages, uh, scripts, sorry, to display well. Up here is the actual data input, the actual text, and it will always stay like that. But to display it right, it's built, the rules are built into the front to a lot of substitutions, a reordering, and then some moving around of bits. And this is how it comes out on the screen. Data, renderings, and um, it's quite a lot of that. At this moment, 150 different scripts are supported. Latin is one of them. The rest of it is the more complicated stuff. But actually, this number can only go up. This number of languages that are defined, because some of these rules are really language dependent, whether you do the substitution or not. 390, this number can only come up. Can go up. So back to Toronto. It was a really cool session. Uh, there were like 25 people in the room in North America means it's about half of uh, LGM. And <laughs> we were talking about it and about that must be a library that supports at the end this UI for controlling this stuff and it turns out the library is Harpus and the that, known to quite a few people, is the guy. At the end of that session we all thought it was a good, uh, a good thing if I, uh, if I was to work on this UI concept for of that feature. So get started, and where do you start is with getting goals defined, and that's called a vision. So I organized an online meeting, find a create list, wherever that is, and I was sort of expecting, just like in Toronto, it's going to be an exercise in crowd management, 25 people in an online meeting, oh my god. So who turned up? <laughs> Even Nathan. So there's already a clue in there where, where this story is going. I mean, I was really grateful they were there because I don't define the goals, I just help that the goals come out. So look, let's look at the vision. It's in three parts. You can start reading now. This is part one. about this infrastructure generally consistently available and the platforms uh, desktop tablet handle that's three different designs so it left really the direct customer are uh, on the application developers <laughs> um, these are value points 
they don't have to get all this knowledge about topography, etc. Uh, that's what the solution is going to provide to them. The last part, end users. Um, anyone editing any kind of rich text, here's the big clue why it's actually uh, called the why this an infrastructure project. It's just a super general, everybody does it to the scope. I work real hard to get this part in, like, are these users going to actually benefit when they're going to find some value in this? It's super easy to just shoot down the project as a ah, nice, fancy, extra, but uh, there needs to be a bit of urgency into the whole thing, and that's in the successful communication bit. Here's it all together. It shows that uh, get a project on the rails and defined and what you want to have out. Doesn't take large documents. So let's move on to that uh, infrastructure. And over the years, I've done a couple of projects uh, in this uh, in this domain. The first one where I cut my teeth was uh, open printing, Linux printing dialogues for uh, for everyone. This project did not end well, and exactly for infrastructure reasons. But it prepared me for the next one, which was Nokia DualSim which I must say is uh, by far the most successful and uh, satisfying project in uh, my career, so that was good. I won there. And for instance, last semester I was teaching and one of the student projects that came up was uh, multi art space, a guide, note that word, for people to take small uh, spaces, change this into atelier for one or more persons, and also an exhibition space. The guide aspect that is an infrastructure thing. I learned some rules along the way that I'd like to uh, share with you here. And the first rule and the second rule of infrastructure is that you just don't talk about infrastructure. This is not a rule that actually needs enforcement. Nobody really wants to talk with you about infrastructure. It people actively avoid you if you do this. They find it really good that you take care of it, but don't bother them. It's very boring. Uh, this has, a, however, one implication that one central way how people get rewarded working in FLOS is having an active community and getting a lot of energy from that. This way is closed off in infrastructure. I, I've learned that uh, the hard way. That means there's really only two other ways left. One is you're on a mission from God. You just want to do it and nobody's going to stop you. Uh, I'm not a mission from work, I must say. Or the other one is, it's simply work that you know, need to pay your bills. Nice work, but it's simply just work. Second aspect. Uh, everything is really unfocused. There are basically no use cases because there are millions of use cases. And they're all equally important. This really upsets people in projects, and there are lots of them, who can only talk by the use case. This is really a usable way to uh, discuss things. But also for designers. In design, constraints are your friend. They focus you. And this is not there. It's everything you can think of and beyond that. Everybody does it. Uh, there's nothing there to help you. Another aspect. I've put here the three large components or trademarks, uh, traits of a traits of a design project. It's a structured process, there's a specification, and then the build is uh, part of the, actual, uh, of the actual project. If you do it well, everything feeds back into each other again. This is how we do it at Metapolator, for instance. What is different in infrastructure is that <coughs> you're not going to get a direct result out of there. You're going to get a library and some guidelines, and this is the deliverable of this project. To get real results that people, users can touch. Thousands of other applications need to do the whole thing again, and the results of that are plus, plus guidelines feed into this process, and then finally, down there, you're going to get a result. I'm sitting here trying to influence that, or con well, control is a big word, influence that is the right one. Now, also, 
not that blue eyed. So most software is just gotta be killed. Just like that. You know it, I know it. And there even more. The guide and the library is has to put this uh, in order. One thing that I learned that is really a trait of um, of infrastructure is that it's about a moment that different components meet. We have one user that goes his path with a plan. We got a font with certain capabilities, <coughs> and you got an application that defines the domain. And um, at the point where the meeting time, I'm actually able to say what is a good UI to to actually control those open type features. And I'm sitting there a year before, I'm not there at that moment. So a general solution that you find in, uh, in infrastructure is that the one person, this user that's there on the spot, actually has to put things right. You do that through letting them configure the uh, user interface at that point uh, for their own uh, for own needs. The trick is to let them configure it without them noticing the directly Last thing I want to tell you a little about the infrastructure itself is that it took me a while to find out that because infrastructure speaks for itself that it's there. Of course it works. And it's for everyone that everybody's thinking explicitly, implicitly, uh, who should provide it. And that's the answer. This is what's killed open printing. Uh, it was just a giant game of chicken between all the parties, like, oh, it's going to actually pay for the work, do the work, etc. Turned out there was no Linux government, so that project died. Back to the features themselves. Some problems and maybe solutions. Tom pointed at this in his 10 o'clock talk about, uh, yeah, we don't know. Uh, there's really little support in any application for controlling this, so you don't know, uh, or that makes that supporting them in the fonts themselves, some very people do it, is, yeah, it's actually a very underdeveloped area, and you cannot design things for how things are right now. You've got to enable the capabilities, and at that moment, the usage is supposed to really shoot up, but also the number of fonts supporting it. And that's the situation you've got to uh, design for. So don't design for where the puck is now, but for where it's going. There's a lot of features, different features that need to be controlled. Um, you can have a black and white discussion about that. Is it going into the UI, this feature, or not? Uh, a lot of bike shedding, or you think it's shades of gray, three shades of gray, and you number this. Level one, two, three. On the first is what implements the vision, communicating text, aesthetics, and typography. The bottom is this thing of making scripts working that you saw with the Devanagari. And in the middle is what is left over. So you start chopping up those 135 into regions. And then you can really say, okay, not UI, fully UI. And splitting up the features, still too many that you have to put into the UI. Taking out mutual exclusive stuff, still too many. So we really have to uh, do a, still a vast reduction in the amount of stuff to show. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. design problems that will pop up is that look at this sentence and you want to reflect the state is this involved in italics? The answer is well, maybe partially, but not at the same time uh, it's this reflecting what is said and showing what uh, what is going on is going to be, this is just for two things 
it's going to be a lot more difficult if you got a lot of selected text than there are 135 things to reflect and how to do that. To end this talk, um, <coughs> What's going to happen from now on? Now, in a way, the situation is clear. The situation is clear that uh, actually the situation is difficult. And it's not the design problems, so I'll skip that one for you, uh, that makes it, uh, makes it difficult. I love solving those problems, etc. But it's actually those infrastructure pro aspects that I talk about, these forces that actually stop the project that makes open type features uh, for everyone, uh, as I would name it, makes it uh, very difficult to, uh, to move forward there. That's what I want to say today. Thank you.